All right, I believe we are live. So welcome everyone to New Hampshire GEG, uh, April 2016 Google Hangout on air. Today we are featuring Google Drawing and we have um, Jen Lattin here joining us uh, as usual, uh, co-GEG leader from Pickerton. And then uh, we also have a special guest today, uh, Christy Fenewal, I believe is the correct pronunciation. Uh, she's actually a co-GEG leader uh, in the state of Texas, so we welcome you uh, from all the way down there. Uh, so welcome, and uh, our goal today is just to talk about ways in which uh, we as uh, students and teachers can use Google Drawing in the, um, in the classroom. Uh, and look at this, we have another person who's joined us. Hello, Jacqueline, thank you for joining us. How are you today? Oh, looks like you might have to check sound. All right, uh, so, uh, so yes, today we're gonna explore uh, how we can use Google Drawing um, beyond just creating a picture and, and, and some of the creative ways. So I believe we're gonna start with Christy. And so Christy, if you wanna go ahead and take it away. All right, awesome, hi everyone. Uh, first thing I wanted to show you here, and pardon, hopefully my screen sharing will work great today, um, but I wanted to show you how to do a header for a blog or a website. Uh, Google Drawings is a great way to do that. So let me go ahead and share my screen with you. All right, just let me know if you guys can't see this. Um, this right here, here we are, is one of the websites that I've created on Google Sites. The top portion here where it says Spartan Digital Citizenship, I actually did that on a Google Drawing. So the way to do that, and as a teacher, what you can do is you can actually make your own template here, and you can push that out to your students or Google Classroom, or you know any other way that you would like, but I recommend making a template, especially if you're working with younger students of the correct dimensions, and then they can edit that however they want to. So I would just call this one header. And then you can just go up here to File, Page Setup, where it says Standard, change this to Custom. And we don't want this 10 by 7.5 inches. Let's use pixels. And you know, right now I'm gonna do 1,000 by 200. For this one here, I like to just kind of, that size you may want to experiment with a few times of putting it into your site depending on which uh, template that you use in your site, this part here may uh, make a difference. But now you have your lovely header here. One thing that you can also do is you can use the research tool here to do a search for images. I can search frog right here, and I can say, ooh, whoops, not like that. I can click and drag, and I can get the frog. So I can put this lovely frog on here. Um, if I click the down arrow here, I can also filter these by free to use images. So if I want to make sure that my image is legally acceptable, I can now use one of these great frogs. So um, I don't know if you've noticed, but it has these great little red lines as I move things around. That's telling me uh, if I'm centered. It will also do it in relation to other objects. Notice there how it's got that. That's based upon how it is with the other objects. So if I like that, I can keep that. Um, I can go up here. I can add a shape if I want to. So I can add a nice square if I'd like to. Uh, I can copy this, and I can paste another one right over here. Uh, do you see the blue lines that come across the bottom? That's now showing me that it's equidistant. So it's going to be the same distance from here to here as it is from here to here. Uh, that's one of my favorite features, actually. I can. I actually you know, didn't. I actually didn't notice that before. So I just. Oh yes. That. <laughs> I use it all the time. You can double click on the shapes to start typing in them. So I could say, Fenewald rocks, like as in ribbits. <laughs> uh, so Fenewald rocks. You can do <laughs> however, however you want to do that. I could make little connector lines. Notice here, it will show me how to connect to that spot. 
if I don't like it like that, I can actually move this image up and I can get that straight too. This, I know that these ones aren't straight. So I can continue doing this however I want to. Um, to get this background to have a color, what I do whoops, is I go up here and I make a shape. So I grab, in this case, the square shape, and I'm going to put it right there. Whenever it has those three lines like that, I know that the shape is the exact shape as that original box. And I'm going to go ahead and change this to, I could do a custom color. Let's do lovely shade of blue. Uh, I'm not going to have an outline. So I'm just going to make my outline transparent. And if I right click on this and do order, send it back, I now have a colored background. That's kind of the only way that you could make a background color for Google Drawings. Now, let's say I'm ready to use this. I go up to File, and I go to Download as JPEG. Okay. When I go to Download as JPEG, I can come up to my Google site. If I go to my gear, and I go down to Edit Site Layout, this part here always freaks people out. They're like, where is the menu? Um, just click anywhere on this header area and just choose file here to upload it. That will upload your picture right there to the blog of your of your Google site. Simple as that. Like I said, the best way to do this is to just do that blank template where I went to the file page setup and do the custom pixels like I did and then just either on the URL at the back, change the word edit to copy and send that link out to students so it forces them to make a copy of that and do it, or put that link into Google Classroom so that everyone can use that. That way, the hardest part is teaching a kid those dimensions. Um, so once you get the right dimensions, send that link out. So, so right. just, just as a, in case people didn't uh, get that, you're recommended if you're doing something in Google Slides is, or Google Sites is uh, 1,000 by 200 pixels. Is that correct? That's what I typically do mine on. Um, that's just because of the dimensions I set my Google site at. I try to maximize that that content area. Some people do like 900 by 200 or 960 by 200. Um, some people go all the way up to 1,200. I would say not less than 900, not more than 1,200. Okay. It's going to be in between those numbers. 200 is a pretty good, uh, you know, height. Perfect. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, yeah, and I and I think that's that's always great. A lot of people don't realize that they can actually customize their header uh, for a Google site, and they always just take whatever the theme is. Um, and so that's that's a great way of actually uh, adding a little pizzazz to to a header. So thank you. Yeah. All right. So next up, I believe I was going to show you guys how to do image maps. These are my favorite things to show. So let me get onto my screen sharing here. So back to just a blank drawing here. I'm going to call this one once it lets me. I'm going to call this one image map for site. So let me give you an example of what an image map is here. So when I go to my home screen of, this is my Google site, by the way. Um, when I go to my home screen here, you see this. You'll also notice that I don't have a header. Um, that's just my personal preference. But I have this whole area down here at the bottom that says Fenovation. And when I hover over each of these little boxes, my point clicker comes out um, as in an image map. So if you were looking at this on your own, you wouldn't see this part that says Open Contact Footer. That's just me as the editor that I get to see this. All of this here, all of these boxes, I also, this is also an image map, meaning I did not make these images on Google Sites. I made all of this as one big image on Google Drawings. And so that's what I want to show you. It makes it much sleeker. If you try to use Google Sites, you'll know that it's very difficult to arrange images on here. Uh, it doesn't look pretty. It's not easy to do text. So here's how you do that. And I so, just this is what I'm really excited to learn about right now. <laughs> well, hooray. So I want to show you, like, 
this one that I think is really fun. So I'm going to go back to that research tool, which you'll notice I use this a lot just for grabbing an image. So I'll say faculty. Uh, I do something like this. Let's do faculty directory. Perhaps it's not going to give me what I'm wanting. Let's try one other search real quick. And if that one doesn't work, we'll just we'll use this. Group photo. See if the challenge is all in. Is actually searching. Here we go. <laughs> this is what I'm looking for. So you can actually do an image map this way once the image appears over here. It's a little frozen right now. So I'm going to bring this up to the corner. Now I'm actually going to make this a little bit bigger right now. So let me try that again. Make this a little bigger. So the concept of an image map, um, this is one that you can do with staff directory if you wanted to. I can come up here. Once I have my image, so insert any image that you want, I can come up here to shapes and I want to find, before I do a shape, I'm going to make each head clickable. So the best shape to represent a head is probably a circle, unless somebody really does have a square head. <laughs> so I'm going to do a circle right here and I kind of drag it over there to to fit their head as best as possible. Now notice I don't really like that big blue blue dot there, but I can fix that. Um, before I fix it, I want to give this a link. So I'm going to tell it to link to, let's say this teacher taught about frogs. If you just type in frog, it's going to actually give you not only Google search results, but also some of your own Google Docs that have that word in it. So that's really neat too. So if I search that teacher's name, and if I had any Google Docs that that teacher had created, it could do it. I'm just going to choose Frog Design. Now what I can do is, while it's still selected, I'm going to come up here to the color. I'm going to make the fill transparent, and now you can see his face again, and I'm going to make the line color transparent. So now you don't even know that's there. Mm -hmm. What I can do is I can copy this and then paste it on some of the other heads and all I have to do is click change and I can add in a different link so I can just call this innovation and it should pull up here's my website and I could keep that going if I wanted to now if I go to sites I meant to have open a tester one to put this in whoops this, get my sites directory up here. If I want to go to just a generic website now, I can go and I can insert in this in this image. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. Um, by the way, this is another example that I'll show you here in just a minute. Instead of doing that image of like staff faces, you could do that image of cells or uh, parts of an essay if you wanted to. So I'm going to put this up here. So I would just go to insert. Over here where it says drive, I would choose drawing. And it should be right here, image map for site, select. Um, I'm going to uncheck to include the title. You can adjust the height and width later if you want to. I'm just going to press save. I do like to center this and press save again. And now what you'll notice, other users of the site won't see this part here that says open image map for site, but if I hover over one of these people's faces, like his, it should take me to frog design, which it looks like it's going to now. So a pretty cool way, if you've had to do image maps in the past, image maps can be a real pain. I love that way. So that's the first way. You can also, let's delete these little little guys here. Um, you can also just make your own shapes, kind of like what I did. So here's a box, 
And then what I did is I made another little box just like this right over that. So get my red lines to make sure that they're matched up. I would change this color to red or something, however I wanted to do it. And I could double click here and say Caster. Okay. If I wanted to center this, come up here and center that text. I could insert any image here if I wanted. Ah, I keep doing that. I could insert this image here if I wanted to on that box. I'm going to make this much smaller. I can also crop this image. I'm going to cut out those last two people. Yeah, they and weren't can, important, were they? They weren't. <laughs> and if I don't like how this photo is covering up part of the red, I can right click on it and I can go to order and I can go send backward. So now I've got this lovely little square here. You'll notice. Um, if I like this kind of option, I can use my control click to highlight both of that, copy and paste. So I can repeat this, typing whatever I want on each one. Now to make them linkable, I typically just, you know, select the entire box and then I come up here to my link and I could type in like, for instance, my website, first one I always think of. So, and I could repeat that as I want to. I could add a background color to all of this, like how I showed you before, with making a shape around it and send it to the back. Um, but if you continue this and then you go back to your site, just like we did, and go to that insert, and you go down to the drawing. And if I did this one again, you would see what that would look like. So since that one's already inserted, see, there it is. Now if I, I can click, notice how my clicker's not here, but it is here where there's a link. Now I have all those boxes. So that's exactly how I made this one right here. And, um, and your site's a very good looking site. <laughs> I mean, honestly, well, thank you. When you, when you, go, when you go to your, like if, if people were to go to your site and, and we'll share your, your site link um, again, um, even towards the end of this, of this session, you would not know it's a Google site. Like, I mean, you, you can tell that you've spent a lot of time and, and I give you big kudos and, and um, uh, it makes complete sense now as to how you're doing it because I'm like, how does she do this? Mm -hmm. I want to know. So, um, no, that, that's a really cool, really cool trick. Well, thank you. Yeah, uh, the drawings one for image maps are my favorite. Um, I tell teachers a lot of times you can have kids insert a picture of their paper that they've done and you can, uh, you know, put hyperlinks over different sections, those invisible boxes, to link to outside media. And if you insert that on a website, now you've got this multimedia tool. Um, pretty cool like that. You can do cells like that, uh, like cell diagrams. Uh, and you can insert those onto your website to make them a resource. So kind of one of my favorite ways to do that. All right, so next. But wait, up, folks. There's going to more from Christy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so next up, I want to show you guys some badges. So I actually have some pictures of this on a little slide that I want to show you. So let me get back to my screen sharing my screen. All right, so on my website I actually have a little presentation here that it's called Dramatize Your Drawings, but it's all my favorite things to do. But one thing that I used to do was I would give my teachers badges, like digital badges after attending different trainings, or if they were caught in the act of Googling, as I called it, um, I would make them a different badge that they could put on their door if they wanted to, or they could put it on on their website, the kids, this was at an elementary school, the kids thought it was funny, like, oh, my teacher's got a Google Level 3 badge. So um, it was mainly for, for the kids, um, but also for the teachers. Yeah. So using the same idea here, I'm going to delete this stuff here. Uh, make a badge. So use your shapes. You can also search over here if there's, like, a particular type of like awesome badge, you can see what they have. I can't guarantee that there's anything great. This one's kind of, I like this one. 
<laughs> badge of awesome. Badge of awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so I can, you know, use this one if I want to. I can scroll, uh, scale it down however I want to. Or I can make my own, which is always fun. They do have these lovely callouts, which, you know, you can use a star here. You can type in that star. Um, they have a lot of different shapes. But I could say, pot being Google licious. <laughs> <laughs> I like <laughs> anything ridiculous you want to put on there. So I can make this a beautiful font, whatever type of font I want. I don't want to scroll forever, so we'll use bangers. <laughs> Caught being Googleicious. Uh, you can make this bigger, however you want to. So I'm going to do like this, and then you can add in any pictures if you wanted to. But I'm going to change this one to a bright yellow, and I'm going to put Chrome. Is I thought maybe they should have a Chrome circle on this badge. Um, you can also notice here how this. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see, but this is a transparent image because you can't see anything behind it, which is what I want. So if you're searching here and aren't able to search by transparent images. You can actually go out onto the main Google page and search by transparent images. Because I don't really want a white white background there. It would look kind of ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So there's my badge. If I don't want badge of awesome anymore, I can just use this. And then what I can do is I can drag up this corner over here and I can make this kind of go around here. So let me whoops, move this over here. Notice how my screen, like it zooms in as I'm doing this. That's really because it's, it's just magnifying what, what this is. You're, you're not actually making this image bigger. So I'm going to make it touch all of the different corners. This is my badge. So I'm going to call this one badge. And honestly, I can <laughs> sorry, I can download this as an image and I can, you know, send that however I want to to a teacher or I can go I can share this with that teacher or I can go to publish to the web. And if I go to the embed code here, choose your image size. I usually do small. If I click publish, it's going to ask is that okay? It gives me this code. That's the code I want when I go to my website right here. <coughs> when I click on the pencil, I click on HTML. I know that looks gibberish to you because I have a lot of gunk right there. But I'm just going to put it right here for now. Normally, you wouldn't see all of this. <coughs> Sorry, I'm choked up on something. Stay with us. <laughs> So whenever I press save, there we are. Now it looks kind of goofy because I didn't adjust the sizing here. So I could make this height like 500 or something like that and this wouldn't look as ridiculous. And again I can adjust. So that one's not looking so great for example purposes. But uh, note that all of this right here, page setup, I went back to pixels, that's why. That looks like pretty high. Um, I would say badges, 50 by 50 is what you want to badge. You can do up to about 100 by 100, but 50 by 50. So um, if you adjust that, it should look fine here. It really doesn't matter too much if you're just downloading that as an image and they're going to put that as their in their signature line or on their website. Um, it's really only important if you're going to embed that in a website. Mm. Okay, so again, the step that I didn't show was just make sure you start off with page setup, go to pixels, change that to either 50 by 50 or up to 100 by 100. 
Cool. All right. I think I was going to show you guys one more thing. Still I, more I, fun. I can tell that you really do like Google Drawing. <laughs> I do. <laughs> so this one here, the vectorize, this is something that I saw some other person do, and I actually had um, some of our kids here at our school do this, and they were able to submit some of their work into one of uh, the state art competitions. So you can do some amazing stuff. Um, the guy who did this all was this Joshua Pomeroy. So I was going to click on his site because the example I have is not finished. <laughs> it's not doing. <laughs> so let me search this. You don't need to give him credit. All right. <laughs> Drawing vector image. So if I do this, um, he's got this whole video. We won't play it, but I'm just going to show the start of the screen. And what's the name of this individual again? Joshua Pomeroy. So, so as you can see here, he's kind of got some cool stuff going on here. Like there's it. By the end of it, he'll have... Let me get to the end where you can actually see his face. You can in this particular viewing. It may not be able to see. Oh, there you go. So he does this with faces. He's got some really famous ones that he's done of like Justin Timberlake. I don't know if you can see this one up here in the far right where it has Justin Timberlake's face. That's the best. These are called vector, uh, vector graphics. A lot of people use Photoshop to do this. However, you can do it all with uh, Google Drawings. And the way to do it is you simply just insert an image like I've done here. And you can use your your uh, polyline tool right here. So it's not like the simplest thing, but it's <laughs> something that I recommend for as a substitute. Let's say you don't have the money for Photoshop and you're wanting your kids to create these vector graphics. So this would be for an advanced design class. This is not just something, oh, I want my kids to do this one day thing. This is for an actual art project. You just keep clicking. So I click often because that's where it remembers where your line is. So you click around the different things. He's got a lot of steps as an artist as to where you want to create these highlights. And so that creates the shape. Now, he mentions going up here, and you can do fill color, um, kind of choosing a color that you think is close to this. I'm not going to do like that close right now. And then, of course, line should be transparent. So he continues doing this throughout the whole thing and in different layers. So he'll put on one, and eventually you can just remove this image from the background. And that's how you'll get something like this. That's so I shared this. <laughs> yeah, I shared this as a substitute for, for Photoshop. This, this is completely free. It's not an easy thing, but doing it in Photoshop is not easy either. So um, it's kind of just another way of doing something that, in the past may have cost a lot of money that you can do for no cost. Wow. So, mm -hmm. so the question I have, Christy, is where's your final product? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so mine's still in the works. <laughs> oh, oh, all right, I'll step back. Okay. <laughs> it's a summer project for myself that I want to kind of redo my face as one of these things here. So, And you can be as advanced, like this one's much more advanced, and, but you could also do one that doesn't have many highlights to your face. Like just scrolling down here, you can see a lot of different, a lot of different ones um, that people have done. So that kind of all depends on how detailed you want to get. Mm. Yeah, no, that, that's that's cool. I'll be looking for yours soon, Craig. No. <laughs> Uh, I it'll it'll be awful. I'm sure it'll be awful. No, it'll be great. Yeah, yeah. no, we'll 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 have to wait for Christy and uh and and see what she does. No, that's that's cool. Thank you very much. I appreciate yeah. it. I appreciate it. Okay, so I guess I guess I guess I'm coming on. Is that correct? Um. Okay. Uh. Let's see. Hold on. It's like I'm forgetting how to share my screen. Okay. <laughs> So uh, I'm also going to share a couple things that you can do with drawing. Can you guys see my screen? 
Yes. Okay, so um, Christy, I hope you approve of these badges. Um, as you're chatting, I was just coming up with some that our librarian uh, has created. We actually started okay. with. Um, can you guys see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so we actually uh, have started a uh, PD, uh, flipped PD badges and teachers earning badges, and so these are just uh, uh, four of them that that uh, our our librarian, her name is Jessie Gilcrest, uh, was playing around, and, and she likes to do things like that. So I just thought I'd share, but that's not why I'm sharing my screen, folks. Okay, so um, this is something that uh, Donna Dennis, a tech integrator in my school district, came up with this idea, and I think this is a great uh, creative way of using Google Draw, uh, especially if students have one-to-one -one Chromebooks or other devices. Uh, so you could see that you know if a, if a teacher is playing bingo, why not why not make it electronic? So uh, obviously there's some preset uh, things that have to be done. Uh, all she did here was come into the table and you know insert a table, and in this case it's a five by what is this five by six. Uh, filled in that information right there, and then this is this is just a um, I want to say this is just a shape, a rectangular shape, and, but each of these is a separate text box. All right, and so the idea is, again, this you would send a copy via Google Classroom uh, or any other means. If you don't use Classroom, you're crazy, but um, definitely uh, make a copy uh, for allow students to be able to do that, and then the students would then just come in here, and then they would choose their words that they want uh, for their bingo card, all right, uh, and then obviously you would fill that all in. I don't want to take up time right now. But then the idea is a student would come over here, and then they would just drag in the chip. Um, and uh, she purposely did this so that the word would still show, uh, so that if they needed to prove that, oh, I, I really do have bingo, uh, they don't have to, like, drag the chips. Uh, and so this, the, the circle is set so that it's, um, send to back. Uh, so I know Christy had showed that before. So in the order, uh, you would send it back so that the words would still pop up. So that was a really cool trick that um, Donna, uh, again, her name is Donna Dennis, uh, used. And I just think this is just, uh, you know, sometimes people think, oh, Chromebooks can only be used for writing. Well, this is a great way that you can use a Chromebook um, for a 10, 20 minute activity. Uh, and, and this, you know, someone may say, well, hold on, Craig, how do you stop someone from moving where you don't? Uh, unfortunately, you don't own it, and the students own it, so um, there's just that trust factor that you have to have. So I think that's just some really, something really cool, unique, uh, and you, I mean, you can obviously make this um, look different and act different and add more color, but um, that's just, you know, bingo uh, with, with Google Drawing. Um, I have a question really quick. Um, the How did she preset the circles to be sent to back um, if they're not currently on there? Did she have to go and put them all on individually and then set it, or...? Uh, you know what? Probably... She, uh, I bet that, that's what she did. That's a good point. Um, you know, obviously I didn't create this. I'm showing something that uh, my counterpart has done. Um, I probably, you know what, that I don't know, because uh, you're right, because all of these would have to be, um, that's a great question. You know I, what, I'm going to have to do a follow-up question, Yeah. Uh, and I can always pop, I can always pop the response, the answer, um, attach it to this, the, the actual link to this event. But that's a great question. You're right. I think that's what she would have had to done, which is great. I mean, honestly, it beats picking up counters that have fallen all over the floor every 30 right. seconds, so. <laughs> right, right. No, that that's, I, I will double check and I will find out, because um, again, I wasn't the one that, that created this. She, she's, she was the, the unique creative one, so. Um, but I just think it's a, it's a, just a, a, a great, great way of, of using the tool. Uh, especially those of us who may not be um, as adventurous with creating vector vector pictures. There, um, we'll do bingo instead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then the the next one, and Christy, I think um, I'm sure you know Casey Bell. 
Um, she's uh, she's one of our partners in crime down in Texas. <laughs> yeah. So I I came across uh, her website the other day. I don't remember what I was looking for, but um, I, I would I, I co-teach a grad class, and um, uh, the co-teacher and I were were we were doing something, but we actually came across this thing, uh, and Casey Bell created this. And again, just another creative way of using Google Drawing. So um, what Casey Bell did is she she has a drawing that she, you know, an image that she has as her background. Okay, so it's covering the whole the whole layout um, of the Google Drawing. Uh, and Casey went in here and went and created again a text box uh, and, you know, uh, being able to type in. So I would just type Craig Scheel here. Uh, and then the idea was, and this was something that she had posted around Halloween time, but it, it makes you think of that. I used to have that magnetic, uh, oh, yeah. magnetic words on my refrigerator, and you know, I'd, I'd move things around. But the idea was that um, students would then, again, they would need their own copy to this, but students would choose words to create um, their poem. Uh, find a creative way of putting together words to, to make a poem. And so I just thought that this was, like, this is really creative. Um, you know, I, I don't have a creative bone in me, um, but you know what, this is just, this was just really cool. And so each of these are, are in fact, you know, she pre-created, changed the, changed, it looks like, it almost looks like these are images, yes? Um, that maybe she searched for. Um, but I mean, you can do this multiple ways. You can you can create uh, text boxes, use different font as 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 done here. But it, it almost now that I click on these, it almost looks like uh, she might have done a search of these words uh, and pulled in. I don't know, what, Christy. Have you had you seen this before? Yes. She has them for quite a few other things. Yeah, it's and do you know? Does she? Does she make? She may have just. I'm pretty sure. I mean, she does a lot of her own like fonts and stuff. I'm I'm thinking she just grouped that, mm. so that's why it's not clickable. Gotcha. But she put on like made her own text box and then gotcha. grouped that or yeah. locked it. Yeah, I, I just think it's it's just it's what a creative way, what a creative way of again using Google Drawing. Um, but again, students would need a copy of um, would need their own copy for for this particular Google Drawing. Um, all right, my next thing is actually stepping outside of Google Drawing, but still relating to Google Drawing. So there may be a time or an instance that a teacher has a Google Doc that uh, he or she wants to push to students. They have their own copy, uh, and they have to fill out a questionnaire or fill out a um, answer some questions. So I just kind of made this very generic. Um, but what's your favorite color? So I might say it's blue. All right, and then I come down here, and it says on the line that best represents the answer to the word problem. So this actually is a Google drawing or um, drawing. And so in order to actually draw a line in this, if I double click, it actually opens up the drawing uh, window. And then I can come in here and I can draw in my line that answers the problem. And then I can change the color to this. Um, I could have chosen the one with the arrow. I decided not to in this case. I could choose the thickness, so it'll actually show. Uh, and then what I can also do is, if required, I can then come down here and label my axes. Right? And then I can come here. I'm doing this very quickly. But then I can maybe come over on this side, rotate this. Again, I would label my axes. Um, and then I would go ahead and save and close, and so now my answer is part of that uh, that Google drawing. So you might ask how I even made that happen. So let's just say this is question three. I would then write my question. My question is this, and then I would come in here where it says insert, 
and I'm insert a draw. I'm going to insert a drawing, and so a different window pops up. What some people kind of get confused of is, well, I have a Google drawing already made. Um, you actually have to do it from inside the Google Doc, uh, and uh, so then I went ahead to, uh, I just went to Desmos, and I just took a screenshot of just a basic coordinate plane. And then I just went ahead back into my document. Uh, don't judge my uh, don't judge my desktop, folks. <laughs> Please don't. I just realized I had to show my desktop. Oh no! Okay. And so now, now I can go ahead, <laughs> do what I need to do, save and close, and so then it's there. So just another way by which um, students would not necessarily know that that's editable and so either you would have to you know indicate here double click you know, on image below or after you do this a while students get you know they get un the understanding that oh I must need to click on this I've also seen some people uh, in a Google drawing will actually kinda do like a word bank and they'll slide the words in um, so you know the over on the left side would be some choices and then over here will be some responses and they would click and drag the words to the appropriate spots. So, I mean you can be creative uh, with that uh, but again in order to have a Google drawing show up there and allow students to be able to edit it um, you just come over to insert and drawing. Um, another thing that Christy touched upon it. Uh, let me go to interactive. Yeah, so this is very similar to what, nope, wrong one. Hold on, folks. I really know what I'm doing, I promise. Um, so, Christy, you actually touched upon this, and I guess I just, I didn't make the connection in terms of your image mapping, um, but we've, some people may be uh, familiar with ThingLink, where you have the ability, you have an image in the back, and you can make things clickable. Uh, we've also done that uh, at our high school, where uh, a whole class would have access to a Google Drawing. And so I just pulled up the state of New Hampshire here. And let's say that this is my document that I've done, that I've completed, and I want to add that to um, whatever we're doing. Again, uh, very similar to what Kirsty was saying, I can put in, so let's pretend that I did something on, um, I don't know, Laconia. I can draw in a little circle there. I can change the color, uh, and then I can make that linkable, just like Kirsty showed. But then, uh, what we've also done as well is, if this was a whole class adding their content, uh, to go ahead and include a table, and then over here, we would just drag this over, and then we might say, um, I don't know, Laconia. I just did a project on Laconia. I would copy this, paste it, and then drag this guy right here. So I now have a little key, a little key to all of the student work that's included. Or you might have the student name. Um, so maybe instead I might say Shield. So Shield did this project, I did it on Laconia, and then you click on it and it actually opens that student work. So I know, you know, with Google Classroom, uh, Google Classroom is great in terms of retrieving information from each student, but if you want students to be able to see each other's stuff, this can be a great way of, of having that collaborative, let's all take a look at this together um, kind of thing. So um, that's what I got. So very very similar to what Christy showed with her website, um, it's just our circles just aren't hidden. Um, why didn't I think of that before? Uh, and uh, so yeah, so there, there's a couple things that I have. Um, Jen, did you want to go ahead and um, I think you had a, an activity that you sure. you've done with some of your your students? Okay, let me see what I have up before I share my screen though, because I'm. I'm I'm on call, so I'm trying to um, answer any tech help here. Okay, let's see. No worries. And okay, perfect. Okay, here we go. Okay, um, so I'm going to share my screen now. Here we go. 
And um, can you see this um, Google Draw lesson plan? Yep. Okay. So um, for two of my um, teachers, and it was interesting. One was a teacher who had really never used um, a lot of technology. In fact, she really started using Word like two years ago. Like just oh, wow. So she went right from that to Google Draw. So don't <laughs> it was a big deal. Anyway, so um, now I've actually done this lesson with her. She liked it so much. She's done it um, with. Several. I've done it several times now with her. Um, what it is is that both she and another teacher in their curriculum, they have to do the family tree, and they're very frustrated because anything online that anyone showed them didn't fit for what we have as our real modern families that we have now. They have the cookie cutter, you know, sort of programs, and so they said, "Jen, we want something so that if someone's a foster child, whatever it is, we want them so that they can um, fit and their family tree can work in here." And we're also trying to teach them about working with maps and keys and graphic organizers. And so I said, well, how about I use this thing called Google Draw? And they're like, uh, okay, I haven't heard of it. And I said, okay, <laughs> it's a thing. Here, I'll show it to you. So I created a template, um, and we had the understanding by design lesson plan. So as she was new to technology, I created the entire lesson plan for her. So it's actually, and I should share this link, it's the entire all the way down um, lesson plan using the understanding by design lesson format, which is, doesn't have to be that way. Anyway, so I created this template. This is a public template. You can go and get it. If you look and search the old templates, you'll see it's in there, Modern Family Tree. And um, so what they do is the students all, of course, grab the template and they make their own and they change where it says copy to be their name. And um, they take this and they what's really cool about it is they learn all about like working with um, graphic organizers working with shapes working with drawings because we talk about okay so how many of you in here don't know your grandparents as far back I don't okay so um, I don't know my grandfather and um, or I don't know my grandmother so first thing I said was before you go in that far look over here to the right and this is the key so this here tells you if it's a circle it's a female it's if it's a square it's a male and so forth and so there's this whole key over here um, and I show them you know if you don't have a grandma don't know your great great grandmother but you know your great great grandfather um, you just right click and you go to this thing called ungroup and now you can click on the grandmother. Oh, you might have to unclick and ungroup again. Sorry. And you can click on the circle for the great, great, great grandmother. And you can delete that. And they're like, oh, you can put shapes together. I'm like, yes, you can put shapes together. You can take them apart. So it teaches them all about grouping um, objects together. So it's just all about the drawing tools, never mind Google Draw itself, and also working with graphic organizers. Um, what's very cool is when they're done. Oh, they also can um, come over here and they can change out. I told them, you can change these out. If I have not thought of something that's in your family, come over here and create it. But your key has to match whatever you have on here. So if you go and make all the circles pink on the key, make the circle pink. If you come in here and come up with a symbol, I had one who said, actually, we have one instead of conflict, um, we're strange. And she wanted to make a symbol for a strange. And I said, absolutely, but you have to have it here in your key. And then so when your teacher comes here and sees this like big jagged, she made this like scary looking thing. She's like, oh, what happened here? And then she can come over here, oh, that family's estranged and so forth. So when they're done, what was really cool, and hopefully I'm going to go to the right thing here. No, not the mountains. Um, there it is. When they're done, a lot of them figured out that they could change their background and they could um, put things in here. So some of them, what they did is they created links. Um, one. So say like um, you had a famous grandmother who wrote a song. They would put the links to that song and make it interactive so you could click and you could go to see the song that their grandmother made. Or one of them was they found an article online or something about one of their family. So just like she was showing you, you can actually go to that object, whatever it is, and you can attach um, a hyperlink to that shape and then it becomes this clickable image map like she said that so from the students family tree it actually becomes this clickable image map of their family tree where they can click and and see this information about fam family members um, so we actually did this as a blizzard bag and they had to go home you know when they're uh, on a snow day and actually talk to their families <laughs> Uh, I have two teenage boys, so anyway, um, so they had to talk to their families and find out more about their families and everything and fill it in. And then a lot of them started putting pictures in there. So instead of having, you know, this, they might even have the picture of the grandmother in there. 
Um, now when they're done, I, they also have to make a, um, a short link so they can link directly to their picture. But we have, um, a lot of you out there have um, LMSs like in PowerSchool. We have Aspen and, or whether it's Google Classroom or whatever it is. And unfortunately with ours, it's the strangest thing. You can make, you can pass in work online, you can request work online, you can even connect to your Google app so you can pull things like Google Classroom, but you can't submit a link. It's really strange. You have to submit a hard a file. So um, for ours, even though they did share it out to their teacher and so forth, what they did is when they were done, just to make sure that she had a copy, is they would download it as a PDF. And it was very cool. They're all excited. Is that their links as a PDF are still all clickable? So even the you know the hard PDF copy that they submitted, she could click and she could see all the links that are interesting related to their family. Some of them were very cool. They um, brought in the, like she was showing with the um, research tool, they brought in the pictures of their nationalities, where they were from, so they would go and they would get, um, uh, so they would go get the flags related to like where their family was from, and they would bring those in, and they would put that like right behind, and I told them, any pictures you bring in, and this was a good um, thing about working where they learned about the drawing tools, you have to make it semi-transparent so you can see the words over it. So it makes it like a background, like she was saying. So say this was going to be, my grandfather did actually come straight from Portugal, so let's go over here, and we'll make that nice and small. So I show them whatever it is, they had to make it transparent so their words, their labels, and so forth, would um, show up. So they learned how here they could click on the picture, go to image options, and then they could set the transparency of whatever that image was, and then their words and their labels and everything would show up nicely over whatever. Of course, you would not make it look quite that horrible, but pretend it looks really pretty. Um, <laughs> anyway, so they would, and they had to learn, because I had some that put like these, there's a man in a canoe covering everything, and I said, well, A, we cannot even see the words on here. What is with the man in the canoe? My grandpa likes canoeing. Okay, um, so we had to go into how you had to make your pictures, um, you know, the size to make sense, how to make it transparent so you're late. I said, there's no way she's going to be able to see any of your text if you have a picture with lots of color and you don't have it transparent. Even if you put this, this text in front over certain colors, you can't see. So if your picture has lots of blacks and yellows all over the place and your text is black, and yet they're not going to be able to see. So we had a lot of um, conversation about that while learning about you know, what is a key, what is a graphic organizer, and also if they were able to create these interactive family tree diagrams um, that they could share both. Oh, and they also put the QR code. They use the trick with goo.gl to put their QR codes on there as well. But it just was really cool because when you're done, if you have to have a hard copy, you can't have an image for any reason, and we ran into that, you can also download it as a PDF as well as an image. And on the PDF, all the links are clickable and work. And that's that was very, very cool. And that's how we found our way around that little issue with our, um, our IMS that we can't for some reason pass in a link. We can connect to our Google Docs, we can upload documents, but we can't pass in a link. So um, that's one thing that we did. So this is just um, a way that we found to um, use Google Draw for that piece of technology that's not out there, which was creating the modern family tree, and we learned how to use it to um, use work, create keys and so forth in maps, and um, also make an interactive family tree because they would click the links and it would come alive with you know information about their parents. So it was kind of like making our own version of um, um, what's the big one out there that one uses for family tree? Ancestry.com. Is that it? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So it was kind of like that. So it was, it was, and she liked it so much. We ended up doing it again. One little funny story about it is, I kept looking over and I'm like, "What does the picture of the cat dressed like Elvis have to do with anything?" And the students were like, "She really likes Elvis. We're hoping for more points." And I'm like, and then she looked over and said, "I don't like cats, though. You lost points." But um, it was just funny because they were trying to find. I said, "Okay, the pictures have to relate to your family tree somehow, <laughs> not to your teacher." But that was funny. I'm like, what's with all the cats dressed like Elvis? 
And they're like, oh, she really likes Elvis. I'm like, oh, okay. Let's do pictures of your family. So anyway, so that was just one lesson that um, I've been doing a lot. It introduced both Google Draw, but it also um, created just something that wasn't out there that people were looking for, and I was, we were able to do it in a simple, this Google Drawing tool. So that was just one lesson that we did. Okay. Let me jump off. And... I know, I'm just like, I have a million things open, so I, I shared Craig's pain there a second ago. Okay, yeah. let me stop, and we'll go to Craig. There yeah. we go. Jackson, right. do, you, do you have anything you, I know we're almost out of time, do you have something you want to add? Um, sure, I can show something really quick. Um, okay. I've, I've been doing some literacy work with teachers who are also re working really hard to integrate technology, and so just trying to go from the literacy end, so just some, just some, different ideas I can show really quick in three minutes or less. Um, I'm going to click over and share and hopefully you can't see my tabs or desktop either so I'll <laughs> copy you and say don't judge me. <laughs> Judgment free zone. Judgment yeah. free zone here. Um, okay so am I sharing now? Yes? Yep you're good. So, you know, uh, the, the teachers I was working with, I was working with a group of K-3 to teachers and then K-2 to and then a group of 3-5, to five, um, and, you know, they were just trying to find simple ways to tie these to tie these things in, and, and I typically start with Google Drawings because images are so accessible to, to kids and I think to, for teachers, too, when they're trying to figure out how to integrate things. So we just kind of talked about using images to spark student talk, um, and choosing images to to put up on a Google Drawing and later maybe modeling some of the, the ways to make it transparent or to, you know, work with the, um, you know, the artsier side of Google Drawings, but even just having um, a, a class discussion about sharing their questions, maybe using an image to spark, um, you know, a new unit or something like that. And so we talked about different ways. We talked about, you know, what would it look like if we put student questions right on the drawing. Um, we, you know, after going through it together, we started to share our thinking along the side. And we talked about, um, as a comment, and we talked about how this is for, for younger grades. It's really modeling how these tools can work. They're starting to see early how to add comments into a document and um, if you're doing it as a whole class how the teacher can add it but note the student's name so they still have ownership over that comment. Um, if the student changed their thinking later we talked about you know adding their changed thinking, talking about synthesis onto those and then being able to revisit that during a unit whether rather than having to go back to a poster or finding the stickies that have fallen off and all those kind of things. So um, nothing too fancy with the tools but in a way to help model early use of uh, Google Drawings. Um, and the other thing we were doing was uh, we really dug into the um, New York Public Library um, images that they released maybe a, less than a year ago. I can't remember exactly when. Um, but so many images over the course of, of um, history that, uh, that teachers could access and students could use. And so we talked about um, you know, using these images to not only spark student talk, like I was noting earlier, but also to work together to, to share thinking about uh, that time in history and make those connections to their real lives. And so just with the younger ones, you know, practicing how do you make this image transparent? Um, you know, how do we add text over top? Are we all going to work on one document and share our thinking or do multiples? And so just kind of those beginning ways to model the use um, and to get students talking about images. That's cool. all. Very short, sweet, and simple. No, that, that's, that's, that's excellent. Cool. Um, all right. So I see that it's 5 o'clock. So 5 o'clock our time, 4 o'clock Christie's time. Uh, so um, I, I know we always do this. Typically, we do a Chrome extension at the end. We don't have one today. Uh, we'll just pass that on for next time. Uh, but just a reminder, a couple things. I know that um, we have uh, two events. I know COSIN, correct, is coming up. I think it's May 13th. Is that right, Jen? Yes, it is. Um, hold, hold on. Let me just... And I might have muted myself. Okay, yes, it is May 13th. You want me to share my screen real quick to show sure. the... Yep. Okay. Um, and while, while she's doing that, I also know that eventually uh, or soon, um, usually this is about the time that Krista 
um, sends out requests for proposals for a tech conference that's usually what end of November, beginning of December that week. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, but go for it, Jen. Okay, so um, while I'm waiting for COSIN to come up. Oh, yay, it did. Okay, there we go. Let me go to events. It's COSIN.org, and if you go to events and you go to clinics, um, we're having the Technology and Leadership Clinic uh, May 13th up on Lake Winnipesaukee. It's at the um, Mill Falls Resort, so the in um, church landing at Mills Falls. And um, so we have, for this is mostly for technology leaders. Um, if you're someone who's a decision maker or um, someone who works with the decision makers in your school, it doesn't matter what the position is. This um, That is the theme this year is all about technology leadership and the um, program, you can view it right here, it's on sketch.org. It has um, all about the changing face of technology leadership. So that, and it is, if you're a Cozen district, it's free. If you're not a Cozen district, it's $49. And it's a full day up at the resort, um, lunch, everything included. Lots of, I think they're giving away a surface tablet. Okay. Um, so the other one, at, you know, that we have in Pinkerton, we're having a second year this year. We're having the um, Google and Education um, Google Summit here. It will be July 20th through 21st this year. The difference is that we're going to have a pre-summit beginners course as well as the um, education, the certification course. So you can go for either the, the we also have an admin certification course um, through apps events that we do during the day, the actual summit day. But before the summit, you can go for your um, educator certification level one or level two and the pre-summit beginner. Now the pre-summit beginners, that is not certification. That is, um, can you see my screen okay? Yeah, you're good. Okay. Um, I realized oh, all this time I've been staring at your face. Um, that is for, you know, those, like I have a lot of staff that when they go to the summits, they get very overwhelmed because uh, a lot of them, a lot of this is new to them. So this is the very, very beginner of understanding what are Google Apps and what are the different things and how can we use them. So that's a very beginner, very perfect before going to the actual summit. The actual summit day is um, two days. And we have Allison Malika, um, Jen Sheffer, I'm trying to think of all the, if you are someone who would like to present, please um, submit to come up here and present. We have people who come from New York last year. We had um, people who came from the UK, people from California came up here. So let me see if I can get the, um, we had the, um, I guess the very famous baguette that travels all over the world. Have you all seen the traveling baguette? I have not. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Did you see it, Jacqueline? You were telling me about it last time we were together and I thought oh, ladies, they're hilarious. They have this baguette and they actually like he has it has I'm talking like a bread baguette. It actually has clothing and outfits and it travels all around the world going to education um, and technology conferences and there's pictures of the baguette at every conference. It's hilarious. He has outfits. He's been to like a Red Sox game. Oh my gosh. Anyway, um <laughs> getting back to this. So here's the schedule um, of speakers. And um, if you'd like to submit something that you would like to present, please do come here and you can submit your sessions. And let's see with some of the speakers that we have on here right now. So here's some, I know we're going to have a makerspace session in addition to the Bloggers Cafe up on the second floor like last year. We're also going to have a makerspace session that Caitlin Ahern is going to be running. Um, so here are some of the different people that will be coming back or presenting. And Jen Sheffield is going to be coming back and Rachel Small. Um, and Jacqueline and Craig maybe this year. I don't Craig, know. where's your picture? <laughs> I'm actually teaching a graduate course that week. So. Oh, yeah, last year you had to do that whole special trip thing, but no, last year was last year was a honeymoon. Oh, yeah. fine. Yeah. I see how you are. You know, it's all good. And then I think the other thing that we want to mention is that uh, Tim also has a. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. What's his? His is technology for innovation education, I believe. Um, is that correct? Yeah, it's this, and it's in the summer. It's one, and I yes, we will have. Um, I'm at that one. We'll be doing the um, uh, Google Boot Camp um, for um, admin as well as for um, trainers, and uh, I think I'm doing the trainer one. And also for um, educator level one and level two. Let me see if I can find. Usually has it. It's on that page. I just saw it in right. the in the purple. In the purple. Okay. Ah, here it is. Okay, there we go. So this is the one up in Tilton. 
Um, another one up in the Lake Winnipesaukee area. This one's um, up in Tilton, right near the Tilton outlets. And so this one, we have the um, classroom teachers in innovation. We have the um, Google Educator Boot Camp. I believe that's the one I'm doing. And then there's a school ad um, administrator one. So that's an entire week of all different things. Um, it's an entire week of innovation in education. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's another one as well. And that one, if you just Google the Tilton School and look at their summer programs, that's how I always find it. So if you don't have the link to that one, just Google the Tilton School. And this year it's in purple, but look for their summer programs and it's always in there. So again, that is the Cozen um, CTO Clinic in New Hampshire. Just go to Cozen.org and go to Events CTO Clinics. And then NewHampshire.AppsEvents.com for the Google Summit here in July, and as well as the Tilton School. Okay, let me get. All right. Is and then uh, just to wrap it up, I, I do want to give a special thanks to Christy. Yes. Um, Christy, do you want to do you want to share your um, information in case people want to um, check out your website or your uh, Twitter? Sure. Sure. Um, this is. Sorry, I was trying to move my screen. Don't worry about it. This is my website uh, because I've got so much, so many of these things open right now. Um, it's actually just fenovation.org. That's a shortener that will take you here. So fenovation.org. And my Twitter, I am at Christy Fenny. So right here, Christy Fenny. Um, that'll be kind of your two best ways to reach me. Cool. Cool. Well, uh, thank you very much for uh, for joining in, and um, I don't know the date, but obviously it's the third uh, third Wednesday of May, and that's probably going to be our last one for the year, uh, and then we'll start up again um, uh, after the summer. So thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.